Hi, I'm Donna from Mason Creations ETC, and I want to thank you for joining me here today. I'll be showing you how to make a 3D mermaid soap dispenser using a mason jar. We'll be doing a beautiful glitter ombre finish. Everything I'm using will be listed in the description box below. Let's get started, shall we? The first thing you're going to do is wipe down your jar with just some plain rubbing alcohol. This is going to remove any dirt and debris and oils that could be on the jar from being handled either in the store or by yourself. So just give it a good wiping down. After you wipe down your jar, we're going to give it just a quick base coat of white. When you're painting, make sure that you paint under the very last thread on the jar. You don't want to get any paint on that last thread or any of the threads because then your soap dispenser lid will not screw on properly. Don't worry about getting any paint on the bottom of your jar. We're going to clean that up later. Okay, we are going to give this jar one quick coat of your matte spray. But before you do that, make sure you cover up your threads with some masking tape because again, if we don't protect those from the paint, your lid won't screw on properly. And this is actually a very important step, so don't leave this step out. If you don't put a coat of the spray between your coats of paint, the paints won't stick together properly. Okay, let's get started making all of our clay items. We are going to be using the DAS clay for the mermaid tail and the delight clay for all of the littler items. But right now we're gonna start off making the mermaid tail. You're gonna put your DAS clay in the mold. Just kind of smash it all over inside the mold. Make sure you get all the little cracks and crevices. And take your sculpting tool and you're going to get all the larger pieces off of the top by scraping it from the inside to the outside just like you're shaving it. And after you get all the large off, then you're gonna go around and work just the opposite from the outside towards the inside, just cleaning up the edges. Now it's time to take the mermaid out of the mold. Just loosen the edges a little bit before you take the mold off. And then you'll lay it down upside down and then just roll the mold off of the clay. Now we're going to put the wet clay on the jar to dry. But before you do that, put a piece of plastic wrap on the jar because this clay does leave a little bit of a mess on the jar and you don't want to have to clean that up. So just tape a little piece of plastic wrap on there and then we'll get the mermaid set on the jar so it can dry and capture the shape of the jar as it's drying. And you'll let that dry overnight. Okay, we're gonna get the small items now with the Delight Clay. Some of the littler items are kind of hard to get out of the mold, so just brush a little bit of cornstarch inside your mold and that will help it release easily. And you are going to do the same thing with the small items as you did with the mermaid tail. When cleaning it up, you'll scrape all of the large clay off the top first and then you'll clean up the edges.
You can remove the mermaid tail from the glass jar now, but you'll notice it's still a little damp underneath. So we're gonna set it to the side and let it dry for about an hour to an hour and a half. Once your mermaid tail is dry, set it on the jar and moving it around, you should be able to find out exactly where your placement was. And then you're going to take a pencil and trace around the entire mermaid tail just so you know exactly where to glue it when it's time to glue it on. Don't worry about your pencil scratching the jar. We're gonna have several coats of paint on this so it won't matter. Okay, now it's time to glue this mermaid tail on the jar. Take your E6000 glue and just spread a light coat over the entire mermaid tail. Don't get it too thick around the edges or it will ooze out from underneath. And you have it traced exactly where you're going to lay it. Lay it down right where you marked it. And if it feels like it's not fitting quite right and it snaps a little bit when you lay it down, there's glue on it so nothing's going to happen. It'll be fine. Once you have it set in place, hold it down with some strips of your masking tape and we'll let it set overnight. Now we're going to glue all of the smaller items, just like we did the mermaid tail, only this time use your hot glue gun. Do the same thing, trace it with a pencil so that you know exactly where you're gonna place it once you have that glue on there. And then you'll set it down on the jar right where you traced it. Cut one of the little seashells open like a little cup because we're gonna put a pearl in there later. If you see any large gaps, use those little mini shells to fill them in. And here's what's nice about the delight clay. If you see any little extra edges that shouldn't be there, you can just take a pair of scissors and cut them right off. Anywhere that you see little holes between any of your shells or under the shells, we're going to close up those gaps with some pre-mixed tile grout. So just grab your little sculpting tool and use the point and just take some of that grout and stick it in the hole. And then we'll take a damp paintbrush and smooth it out with a little bit of water. Don't put a lot of water on it. Just kind of pat the brush on a paper towel before you wipe the grout with it. And this will just smooth it out real nicely.
There are a lot of color differences on this jar because we used real shells and then we used some clay. So we are going to give the entire jar another coat of just some white paint. It's time to start our ombre finish now. Grab your darkest color paint, and we are gonna start at the bottom. With your paintbrush, go up about an inch and a half to two inches, and you are going to use your brush to get all of the shells and all of the little items because the sponge will not get into all the little cracks and crevices. But sponge as you're painting. And then once you're past all of the little items that's on the jar, the shells and everything, then you can use just your sponge to go around the rest of the jar. These are the paint colors that I have mixed at Home Depot should you choose to use the same colors. Okay, grab your medium color paint and we are going to create a shadow around all of the little items on the jar. So you are gonna paint up on the edge of each item and then a little bit on the jar underneath each item and around each item. This is going to create a shadow and make all of these little items stand out really nice after our ombre finish is done. Now you'll take that medium paint all the way around the jar, just like you did with the first color, and use your brush to get into all the little cracks and crevices inside all of your little shells and everything. And then you'll sponge, just like we did with the first color. And again, like you did with the first color, go up about an inch and a half. And then as you're sponging, you're going to take some of that medium color very lightly and put it on the first color, on the darker color. This will blur the line between the two colors just a little bit so it doesn't look so harsh and that will create the ombre finish.
Now grab your dark sponge and with just what paint is left on there, bring the dark up into the medium a little bit, blurring that line even further. And you may actually have to go back and forth between the colors a little bit until you get the effect that you like. If you need to add a little bit of paint to your sponge, just put a little bit on there and then scrape it off on the jar. You don't wanna get it too heavy, then it won't blend properly. And if you get too much paint on your sponge, just dab it on your paper a little bit and that'll take some of the excess paint off of it. Okay, grab your light blue paint. Mine is a little bit thick, so I'm going to add just a couple of drops of water to it to thin it down a little bit. When your paint gets too thick, it's actually a little bit hard to make the sponging look right. So I'm gonna add literally just two drops of water. You're gonna do exactly like you did with the other two colors with the light blue. Fill in what you need to with a brush and then you'll sponge the rest of the way around the jar. You'll catch the fins with the light blue or whatever color you're using, sorry. Um, and then you'll get the top of the starfish and the top of the seahorse. Brush your sponging your light color on there. Take a little bit of it very lightly onto the color previously to your medium color, just like you did with the other two. And you'll need to go back and forth with the two colors until you get that line blurred and it looks good. All right, we are going to do the last and final color on this jar. Get your white paint ready. Mine is a little bit thick, so I'm gonna add one drop of water to it. Grab a sponge and let's get going on this white paint. We're gonna get just the tip of the mermaid tail with a little bit of white with the brush before we begin the sponging and then we'll sponge the white paint on the rest of the jar all the way around making sure we get a little bit on the tip of the starfish and a little bit on the tip of the seahorse You'll need to sponge a little bit of the blue back on top of the white and then go back and forth between the two colors just like you did with the others.
You'll need to touch up the dark again just a little bit on the bottom of the jar. Sometimes the white shows through just a tiny bit because you're putting dark over top of a white. So just touch it up a little at the bottom, being real careful not to go up too far and do it very, very lightly. Grab your white sponge again, put very, very little paint on it. We're going to highlight everything on the jar right now. Do it very, very lightly, just tap and get just a tiny bit of white on everything. It'll make it stand out very nicely between that and the shadow that we put on there. Okay, let it dry for a couple of hours and then we'll move on to the next step. It is time to add the glitter to our beautiful jar and I am pretty sure everybody's been dying to do this. So you are going to take your Mod Podge and just give your entire jar a light coat. Make sure you get in all the little cracks and crevices by all the shells and the seahorse and everything. And um, if there's any pooling of the glue, get that off of there. Just kind of dab your brush in it and wipe some of that off. You don't want that to pool thick, otherwise it won't look good in the finish of the jar. Once you get your entire jar coated with the glue, then it is gonna be time to shake that glitter on there. Make sure you cover the entire jar and shake off the excess. If you have a spot where the glue didn't cover properly and the glitter won't stick to it, don't try to fix it with the brush. Take your glitter with you when you spray the jar and just sprinkle a little bit on it at that time and it will fix it. By now, I am sure you've made quite a mess on the bottom of the jar, so it is time to clean it up. You'll need a damp wash rack and that little tool the sculpting tool, use the square edge of that and just kind of scrape all the paint and everything off the bottom and then you'll wipe it with a damp cloth. I use the cloths that have the little scrubby on it because it just kind of helps get some of the paint and debris off as well as scraping it. After you're done cleaning up the bottom, we are going to spray it with a triple thick glaze which is going to make it look gorgeous. Until you spray it with that, though, be very, very careful how you handle and touch the jar because the glitter will come off very easily until it's sealed. After you give your jar the coat of the triple thick glaze while it's wet, it's going to look like you've lost all the shimmer from your glitter. Do not be concerned. Once it dries, all your beautiful shimmer comes back. Now that the bottom of your jar is nice and clean, before you add your triple thick glaze, make sure you cover the threads of the jar with masking tape again like we did before. Okay, in this step, we're going to add the colored rhinestones to the jar. I have them separated in little trays according to size and color. I have dark ones, which I'll put 
at the bottom where the paint is darker and then I have lighter ones which I'll put at the top where the paint is lighter. You'll be using the Beacon Gem Tap to add the rhinestones and the pearls to the jar. This glue dries completely clear, so don't be concerned about any white circles that you see around your stones. Our jar is just about complete now. Let's put some stunning organza ribbon on there and our soap dispenser lid and we will be done with a very gorgeous jar. All of your friends are gonna be so jealous when they see this jar in your bathroom.